Hello and welcome, I'm Sim UK, and it is my goal to provide to you the most honest, fact-based, critical reviews on YouTube. If you find this review helpful, then please hit that like button, subscribe, and help to support the channel by donating via the links below. Thank you so much, and enjoy the review. Despite numerous attempts to dislodge it, ETS2 not only continues to maintain the top spot for truck driving simulation, it actually continues to add new features and improve upon existing ones. Today, I'm taking a look at Truck and Logistics Simulator, and this genuinely could be a contender, and it's the first one that I have really seen. Now, it might not immediately appear like a contender to you, but this game contains some much-wanted features that ETS2 still hasn't managed to implement, it has far fewer restrictions in terms of movement, and in some areas, it is just vastly better. But Truck and Logistics Simulator is in early access, and it isn't all better. At least, it isn't yet. In Truck and Logistics Simulator, you will start with 12,000 coins, dollars, euros, whatever you want to call it. And you can use this to buy your first vehicle. You basically have a choice between a car or a small minivan because you won't be able to afford anything more. There are 20 unique vehicles in the game already and I wouldn't be surprised to see more in the future. Once purchased, you can customise your vehicle a little bit. You can change the headlights, you can change the colour of the dash lights, which is pretty cool actually, and you can also change the dash trim colour, which I'm not a massive fan of. In some of the cars it works better than others, but overall it's not that great. And finally, you get to pick a single colour for the vehicle that you have bought. And all of this at no extra cost, or so it seems. You click drive and then you will be spawned into a random parking space. Take a look at the GPS map in the bottom left hand corner for either a green or yellow circle. And that denotes where you can find available jobs. Then you need to drive to it and select the job that you want. If it's a simple tow job, then you just connect to the item to be towed and you're on your way. If it's a pallet job, then you will need to jump into a forklift. Then you will need to load the pallets either into the car or onto the trailer or both if you have a minivan. Then you need to hitch up the trailer and away you go. You simply follow the GPS to the drop-off location and when you get there you'll find that some vehicles have reverse cameras which in some instances can help things but not always. Along the way you will be tasked with managing your fuel which seems to evaporate super fast in this game at the moment probably because the map is not that large. And any damage that you incur whilst on a job will reduce the amount you get paid. One of the things I really like is that the vehicle can be damaged and visibly looks so, although not that convincingly at the moment. But also the pallets, if they're dropped or tipped or whatever, they also take visible damage. Two really nice minor features that add an awful lot to the potential immersion. Now some of the jobs that you take are for fragile loads and they will need extra special care. So it's quite annoying that you can't actually tie them down. They just tend to slide about and get damaged and you lose money as a result. The way that the steering is at the moment, and I'm using a G29, makes things even worse. But overall, it does work. And that's about it really for all of the jobs. Earn more money, buy better transport vehicles, and get better paid jobs. Now there's some stuff that isn't implemented yet, like the business aspect of the game. They say that there are going to be scalable warehouses that can be adjusted to your needs. No real clarification about what that means, but it's definitely intriguing. They also mention drivers which can be hired to automatically do missions and much more. Not entirely sure what much more means, but again, it's nice to know that it's on the cards. 
One thing I really do like is that no vehicle is locked by level. I think that's great. I think that's far more realistic. You earn the money, then you buy the vehicle that you want. There are going to be levels in the game. I think that the levels will unlock better jobs. And arguably, I think this could be a better way of doing things than simply locking down vehicles and their purchasable items. Now, some of the truck jobs have even better loading sequences than you see in the minivan. We have telescopic handlers, wheel loaders and loading trailer wagons from within a loading bay area. That's pretty cool. And I've not seen it yet, but there's also a dumper truck which can be used to load, I don't know, gravel or dirt into bucket trailers. Another great feature. And in the future, not yet released, there are going to be container shipping movements. This means that we're going to have cranes. Now they exist already in the game, but you can't actually use them yet. Something that's set to appear later. Plus, I think you will also be able to purchase a forklift and load it onto your semi-trailer and take it with you. Now this presumably means that we can buy and own our own trailers too. Again, that's a little bit of speculation. It's not in the game at the moment, but it definitely seems to be the direction in which this game is heading. Now the map isn't huge, but it's not tiny either. It spans across some three islands and it's connected by some rather spectacular bridges and some pretty nicely done tunnels. Again, something which isn't currently implemented but is set to be included are dangerous off-road missions. Now, this is a completely free open world and I do mean completely free open world. There are areas which have no roads on them at all but you can still get there if you take an underwater shortcut. Anyway, off-road dangerous missions could be incredible. Again, I think this is something that's missing from ETS2. If you've ever played Scania Truck Simulator, then you know what I mean. It would be great to have some really difficult complex drop-offs instead of the same meager, quite easy standard situation all the time. Now, everything seems to be automated in the game right now, which is a bit of a shame. The positioning of the pallets, the closing of the side panels and the doors of the vans, etc. I would much prefer to be able to get out of the truck, walk over and do this myself. Now that isn't implemented at the moment and it's not clear whether or not it's going to be implemented in the future. But that, in a nutshell, is what you can expect within this game. But that isn't all this game has going for it. Graphically, Truck and Logistics Simulator is limited but it does have some fairly good parts. Some of the light effects at dusk and dawn do actually look pretty darn nice. And the vehicles, which are reasonably well modeled, they're not breathtaking by any means, do have excellent mirrors on them. I mean, I can really see what's behind me far better than ETS-2 has been able to produce up until more recently where things have got better. But the mirrors in this game are exceptionally good, but, the textures are noticeably very poor across the board. And there's a lot of pop-in, which is quite irritating. Now this is an area of the game that definitely will need some work, especially with the textures. And I imagine, as it's in early access, this is something that we could certainly expect to improve. But there's no mention of it, there's no guarantee, so just bear that in mind. Additional concern is obviously warranted when you understand that this game is also meant be played on the Nintendo Switch. Now that in itself doesn't necessarily guarantee that we're not going to get high res, high def uh, textures and graphics on the PC, but it certainly does justify the concerns that I and many other people, especially hardcore sim fans, are looking at when we consider this for a long term investment. Now where this game really does excel is in the physics and realism department. Now bear with me because it's not all good news. 
I personally really quite like the way the AI vehicles behave in some circumstances. They can accelerate much quicker than you and that makes sense because a car without a trailer and a load of stuff should be able to do that. They're rather unpredictable in the sense that sometimes they'll be weaving around the road, sometimes they'll be in the middle of the road, in the middle of two lanes. I kind of like that unpredictability. I'm not a big fan of all AI vehicles behaving exactly the same way and stopping and giving you the space you need whenever you need it. That just isn't realistic. So I kind of like some of the AI behavior. They really do move more realistically in some senses there. In pretty much all other senses though, they're very unpolished. I've seen trucks bouncing, I've seen vans flying, and they will drive into you in a number of different ways, which actually is fine, because I prefer that to them avoiding you like you have the plague. Now at the moment there are no police, there are no traffic lights, well I, I take that back, there are traffic lights, but they mean nothing whatsoever. What's supposed to happen is if you don't adhere to traffic restrictions, then you lose points or money off of your delivery. I'm not sure that's a great way of doing it, and I hope they reconsider that. Now I mentioned there was no weather yet, but it looks like the clouds are actually moving, so I'm wondering whether or not we're heading towards dynamic weather where it could rain or snow or fog could appear over a period of time unexpectedly. These are the things I would love to see, again, implemented to a point in ETS2, but I think it could be better in both games. And certainly, at the moment at least, it doesn't look like the weather's working at all. So, okay, the underwater feature is odd. But unlike ETS2, this game is not linear. There are no invisible barriers. If you stray 10 feet off of a main road to either side, in ETS2 you will hit a barrier of some sort. So maybe it's possible in this game that we will have the ability to get out and walk around. And I genuinely feel that in ETS2 this is the reason why we don't have the ability to get out of the truck. Because they know that the actual mapped area where you can walk around is far smaller than it actually looks like. But to be honest with you, anyone who knows how to use the console in ETS2 is well aware that there are massive gaps. This is not a fully fledged land that you can explore at your leisure. And I think that's the only reason why ETS2 hasn't implemented the ability to get out of a truck. But to be honest with you, who the hell wants to get out of their truck and walk 60 miles anyway? I just want to have a look at the angles I've got available to me and see if I'm going to hit something before I hit it. That's all I really want. Now you can't get out and walk around in this game either, but potentially I think the chance of that happening is far more likely here. And that would really make this game stand out in a very particular way, where in ETS2 it simply doesn't work. Now at the moment there's no real business at all, there's no real economics of any kind, which is disappointing, but all this stuff is set to come. I've mentioned that the vehicles are not locked by levels, which is great. One thing you can't do is sell a vehicle that you already own. Now that's a bit of a shame. If I've bought a minivan and I've worked really hard and I want to upgrade to the next sort of van, then I'd like to be able to sell my old minivan so that I can buy something better. What would be great is if we had second-hand vehicles that we could buy for less money, but sort of had uh, maybe less uh, reliability or something like that. Now, I'm not entirely sure, because I've only just thought of it, whether or not you can buy multiples of the same vehicle. You probably can, because there are employees expected to come later. But at least for now, there are no employees, so it makes no sense to have two vehicles at all, let alone two of the same. One of the best features in this game by a long stretch, and this is definitely something that should have been in ETS2 a long time ago, is loading at the point of collection. It is excellent, especially some of the truck loaders, not just forklifts in this game. You've got low loaders and cargo, cargo box haulers too. And at some points you have a forklift inside of the loading bay, which is great, but it's a bit of a shame that you don't have to get the pallets off the shelves lower it down and then load it into the back of the uh, into the back of the trailer that would be even better than it is already it would be really nice if the game allowed you to unload these things at the drop-off point as well at the moment you just reverse into it and you get your money 
but it would be incredible if we had the option to unload as well as load. I think that would add so much to the game. Although the physics in this game are pretty poor and the wheel support slash steering implementation is just above dreadful, the collisions in this game are way, way more realistic. You can actually move heavy things out of the way, you can spin, skid, flip, not necessarily in a particularly realistic way because of the current physics that are implemented in this game, but you can also take damage. Now, this is visible damage and it is meant to impact on the vehicle itself. It certainly loses you some money if you've damaged the, uh, the load that you're carrying. But unfortunately at the moment, it does not affect handling. The headlights and the windows simply don't break at all. And what's probably the most disappointing thing is that damage gets reset when you start a new job. So at the moment, it's not really implemented particularly well, but definitely all of the components are in place to be improved upon. And if we have realistic physics, realistic, realistic steering wheel support and steering implementation, combined with realistic collisions, realistic AI behavior, then this game could really, really feel good. Something else that really impresses me, but I haven't really seen any evidence of it yet, is that the game promotes dynamic tyre deformation. It allows you to adjust the pressure of your vehicle to suit your needs. Now, some vehicle damage is promoted as braking axles. It can cause them to bend, which affects vehicle physics realistically. I just don't think that's currently implemented, at least not very well. But you can see that the mechanics that are required in order to make that a real thing have already been thought about and do exist partially. Now, all of that information is very exciting. I'm not bashing ETS2, I'm a big fan of ETS2 and SCS as a company, but they certainly have very little intention, so it seems to me, to really boost the level of realism in ETS2. And this game seems to have that at its core. In terms of audio, it's very basic, and in most cases there's a lot of audio missing, like suspension compression and noises that you would expect to hear on a daily basis. As such, the way the game is at this precise moment in time, it really does lack any kind of real immersion. There is no way I could play this game like a proper sim right now, it just isn't deep enough, the physics aren't real enough. The damage physics and implementation that do exist, I mean it's nice to see that if you drop a pallet the pallet is damaged, if you crash your car the car is damaged, I mean visibly damaged, but it's not done particularly well right now and it really doesn't affect handling at all. I have tried to destroy my car to the point where it doesn't work at all, but it doesn't really work. That being said, when you skid, crash, drive over dusty environments, the effects, the kick up of dust and the audio noises that you hear are pretty good wouldn't say they were perfect, but they're definitely heading in the right direction for me. Now, unfortunately, at the moment in early access, there are no controller customization options at all. Wheel support exists, but it's very poor. There are no gears. You cannot add gears to the game. So basically, you have brake and accelerate, which, depending on which pedal you're using and in which direction you're going, will double up as a brake accelerator or reverse power. It's just, it's horrible, it's not realistic, and it's definitely something that's going to need to change. There's no head tracking in the game, and for any driving simulator, I think that's a massive, massive faux pas. The GPS character is an arrow, and unfortunately it's the same color as some of the job markers, so especially at the beginning when you first start playing the game, it's very easy to lose yourself on the map because you can't see where you are. And when you're driving down the road, the arrow seems to float to one side of the road, which on a couple of occasions has caused me to take the wrong turn. Customization is limited. You get to pick your driver's face and you've got the small amount of customization that I mentioned earlier when you purchase a vehicle. Now, at the moment, there's only a single player campaign, which isn't fully implemented at all. But there are many indications that it has multiplayer as default part of the game. Now, I rather suspect 
This is not going to be an MMO style like in ETS 2. I'm thinking it's probably going to be more like 4 to 8 players maximum. And actually, that's not too bad, especially since the game is coordinating a co-op system where you and a multitude of players can join together and run your own company. There's a lot of positives to that. So right now on Steam, it's got like a 25% discount and it will cost £16. Now, what it has at the moment might fail to hold your attention. And as such, if this was a finished product, I would argue that it isn't great value for money. But that being said, £16 for what you get is not atrocious. I think the price is very reasonable. Without a roadmap, it's hard to be certain of exactly what you're going to get as a finished article. But potentially, with everything that's in place and everything that's promised and the potential that this game has, this could end up being incredible value for money. Right now, admittedly, it's a gamble. It's an investment. And you're going to have to trust that the development team are going to deliver on their promises and within a timely period. But I think it's a gamble that you should at least consider making. Definitely add this one to your wish list. I still think that Steam should enforce EA titles, early access titles, to include roadmaps as part of their agreements. And if they fail to deliver on that, then you have the option to ask for your money back. In this particular instance, I think 25% discount is very reasonable. I think the pricing is very reasonable. And I think the potential definitely is justified uh, for a potential investment in this game. This really does look like it could evolve into something really great. But what does Truck and Logistics Simulator need in order to be better than ETS 2? Well, to be fair, it's a long, long way off being a, a genuine competitor for ETS 2. But in order of importance, I'd say wheel support and the steering needs considerable work. It's all over the place at the moment. At times, the vehicles are completely uncontrollable, and each vehicle seems to handle differently, which is fine. And out of all the vehicles that I've driven so far, it is the van with the droppable sides which I found has the best handling overall. And that's in third person and in first person. But one thing I did find was that when using a wheel, if you drive in first person, it is far, far better. In addition to wheel support, I think the game needs to be able to support a secondary controller, maybe two or three controllers at the same time. Now, the loaders are already excellent, but obviously they require different controls than a simple truck would. I use a Cytex side panel for things like this in order to raise, lower, extend, grab, twist and pull the extension arm on low loaders and things like that. That's something that I would definitely like to see added to the game sooner rather than later. Head tracking, as I've already mentioned, in a driving simulator, for me at least, is absolutely essential and it's quite irritating when games release without this being a consideration. Yes, I am looking at you, SnowRunner. The game needs to produce the deep business model it is promoting. That's including buildings, garages, employees at a bare minimum. The maps need to be much, much bigger. The size that this map is right now is fine, I think, for smaller vehicles, but it's definitely not enough road for a long haul experience. The vehicle physics in some areas definitely need improving, although the crashes and collisions I think are really good and really quite realistic. So I'm, I'm hoping that they're going to keep the good bits, the out of, you know, when you lose control of a car, then you have lost control of a car or vehicle. But I do feel like they need to have more weight. I do feel like they need to have better steering physics. There's definitely a lot of work that needs to be done in this area, but there are some good signs there already. The ability to get out of the truck and walk around, to switch between vehicles by getting out and walking over to the next vehicle, and even into buildings in order to purchase them or, you know, um, go in and accept a job so that you can pick up the, uh, the load that you've come to collect. This, I think, would really set the game apart from ETS 2 in a very key area. It's something that people have been asking for, myself especially, from ETS 2 for a very, very long time. And the fact that they've implemented the ability to walk around in a garage suggests that maybe this is something that's coming, but if, uh, if it could be implemented in this game first, then that would be a massive thumbs up for me, at least. So please do not get me wrong. I am in no way trying to bash ETS2. I love ETS2, and I have the greatest of respect for SES and their ongoing work ethic. Let's be honest, there's a long way that Truck and Logistics Simulator needs to go before it can genuinely get challenge ETS2 for the top spot. 
but as a foundation it has an awful lot going for it. Now personally I would really need to see this game divulge a proper plan, a development map and actually deliver upon it before I could 100% guarantee that this game is going to be the best that I hope it can be. But let me be clear, this game really has impressed me in a lot of areas and I have highlighted the major failings as I see them in this review. Multiplayer already looks like it's going to be on the cards. To be honest with you, I could wait a lot longer for multiplayer than I could wheel support and head tracking. Even the business elements are more important to me than multiplayer and I hope the priority list for the developers is in the correct order. Now one thing that does concern me about this game and it could be a complete deal breaker is the fact that it really isn't clear how hardcore sim they want to be. If they choose to be a proper simulator over some arcade game with monster trucks in it then this could genuinely get ETS2 players attention but it will take time and development but I really hope that they can deliver on their promises. Right now the game does feel more arcade than sim and you know what? That's actually fine. If it makes it more accessible for more players then that's okay just so long as it ensures a fully hardcore sim experience is retained. But it really is not clear if this is going to be focusing on hardcore sim players or generic arcade players. A lot of the very early gameplay footage that I saw was by YouTubers who basically have no sim experience or particular interest in hardcore sim either. And even though it has some great features, I'll be honest, if they go the, down the latter route, if they go down the arcade route, then I will lose interest in this game almost instantly. Perhaps this game will be enough to give ETS2 the incentive that they need to introduce some of those long-awaited features. Either way, this is one of the best potential trucking simulator games that has released in quite some time. It needs a lot of work, it needs a lot of time, but if it gets the support that it deserves and it heads in the direction that I hope it's going to head into, then this really could open up the field and uh, it could be a real contender for ETS2 players in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this review has been helpful for you. Please leave me a comment in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Hit the thumbs down button if you didn't enjoy it. Give me some feedback. What can I do better for my next review? And thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care. Goodbye for now.